Now that we understand that entropy is part of whether a reaction or a process is absorbing or giving off heat, we now can combine our entropy and our enthalpy and say, when we consider both of them, uh, does the reaction or process give off energy or absorb energy? So when we consider these two um, aspects, what we get is what's called the Gibbs free energy. So that's saying we're com uh, considering everything involved and we say, is energy being, being given off? Is energy being absorbed? And then more importantly, how does this affect spontaneity of a reaction? So we're gonna be using a, an equation for Gibbs free energy, and I just really wanna show quickly where this equation comes from. And really where it comes from is the second law of thermodynamics. So you, you, if you take a physics class, you can go and just uh, discuss this. But really what the second law of thermodynamics says is that disorder is favorable. So whenever we have a process, um, it doesn't matter if we are making something more spontaneous or excuse me, more disordered or less disordered, overall the universe becomes disordered. And so for every process or reaction, when we look at everything, maybe not just the process itself, when we look at everything, overall the universe becomes more disordered. And that's really um, what we're saying. So even if I take a situation and I make it less disordered, um, when I consider everything in the universe, the actual universe becomes more disordered. So that's really what we're saying here is that entropy or disorder is favorable. And that's one of the things that we're gonna come from. So we understand, or we've already discussed that delta S for some situations is related to the delta H. So whether heat is being absorbed or released. So we looked at the delta S or entropy for a phase transition and we came up with this equation. So if we uh, plug this into our second law of thermodynamics and then multiply by T, we get this kind of uh, intermediate equation. And what we do is we define this negative T delta S of the universe as being delta G or the Gibbs free energy change. And that's what we're gonna be looking at. If we really wanna understand as a reaction, spontaneous or non-spontaneous, we need to consider the entropy, delta S and the enthalpy, delta H, and now we find out we need to consider the temperature of these things. And the Gibbs free energy con uh, considers both of those. The units on Gibbs free energy is gonna be the same as the units on our enthalpy, kilojoules per mole. And this says that the change in our Gibbs free energy is equal to the change in enthalpy minus temperature uh, times the entropy change. So this is the idea if I want to look at does a reaction truly give off heat or absorb heat, I need to look at the enthalpy and the entropy. And then also I need to look at the temperature of the system. So temperature has an effect on spontaneity. And overall what's gonna happen is uh, for a spontaneous process, we want the delta S of the universe to be greater than zero. And that's really what our second law of thermodynamics. So when we go through and do these calculations, the basic idea is if delta G is a negative number, then the reaction is spontaneous. If delta G is a positive number, the reaction is non-spontaneous. And if delta G is equal to zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. It doesn't really wanna go either way. So when we do these calculations and we get the question, is the reaction spontaneous? We wanna find the Gibbs free energy delta G and we want the number to be negative. So we'll go and look at some examples of this just in a second.